The Patrick Star Show does not star Patrick Star. At least not the Patrick Star you recognize from here. Who, me? Or even here. This Patrick Star lives in a world of chaos. A world where dinosaurs roam the Earth, and SpongeBob is a monster. I'm home. And all of it was set off by a single clumsy mistake. There's more than one universe in Bikini Bottom. In SpongeBob, we've already established that characters can travel through both time and universes. First, Squidward going forward and backward in time. I'd better go to the past. And later, Plankton uses the transmogrifier to actually visit an alternate universe. The life switcher was a success! The Krusty Krab is mine! And if there's one thing I've learned from every time travel story, it's that once you do it, the space-time continuum never really goes back to normal. <laughs> but back to Patrick. In the Patrick Star Show, he is much younger, somewhere between here... Hello! ...and here. What? He's living with his mom, dad, sister Squidina, grandpa, and pet Ouchie. <laughs> Patrick and Squidina produce a talk show that rarely goes as planned. It gets delayed by stair standoffs, couch spelunking, and even a weird smell or two. Where is that freaky, funky smell coming from? But what you'll notice throughout is that Patrick's house is stranger than you'd expect. Part one. Let's start with his bedroom door. Open it once, and you'll get an angry knight sprinting toward you. Oops, wrong door. Open it again, and it's the cold vacuum of space. Yes, wrong door again! And a third time, it's just a normal door. Hmm. Now that's enough evidence right there. Seriously, a portal to another dimension pretty much puts a bow on my multiverse theory. But hold your applause, because of course, I've barely even started. In one episode, Patrick ends up diving deep into his couch cushions looking for a lost remote. Whoa, this place is a gold mine. And what usually might be an opportunity to find some loose change. For Patrick, it's a wormhole to a completely couch-based world so massive, he needs a rope to find his way back out. We're safe! <laughs> I was wrong! Seriously, flying sock monsters are pretty weird, even by SpongeBob standards. But it's not only Patrick's couch that does this, as all furniture seems to be connected to this strange alternate universe. It's so normal that there's even commercials for tours through your own furniture. Imagine eight luxurious days seeing your couch, your love seat, even your credenza like you've never seen them before. But let's bring it back for a minute, because there aren't only multiple worlds, but also multiple Patricks. In this scene, Patrick falls off a bookshelf and is caught by none other than himself. Don't worry me, I've got you. Oh, oh, there I go. Glad I bought that self-help book. Now, multiple Patricks is nothing new. Some of his clones might even still be working at the Chum Bucket. I, I but this one is clearly different. He emerges from a book that's much smaller than he is, and for the first time, both Patricks know they're the same. Listen again and see if you can hear what I mean. Don't worry me, I've got you! Oh, oh, there I go. Even if Book Patrick was some kind of clone, he would never call the real one I and me. Unless, of course, they're actually the same Patrick in two places at once. The Patrick Star Show universe is a weird place. But it gets even weirder, because in a different scene, we see a different stop-motion version of Patrick, where he now works for Plankenstein and has apparently helped build a monster version of SpongeBob. Release the whirly brains! <laughs> Weirdest thing, though, is that they're also watching the same Patrick Star show that we are. That show is made by idiots for morons. Well, that's why I love it. The only way they could possibly do that is if they're in an alternate universe that intersects just enough to allow TV broadcasts through. If you're still not convinced, then this final piece of evidence will change your mind. Gotcha! Ah! But to do that, you'll need to rewind a bit to the Camp Coral era. R3. In this episode, or universe, as I'll demonstrate, SpongeBob had discovered the Krabby Patty formula much earlier than expected. 
Say, could you tell me what the ingredients for these patties are? Oh, sorry, Mr. Plankton. I can never remember things like that. Particles! That's why I wrote them down on this list. You know, kind of like a formula. So, Sandy hatched a plan to put it back to normal. This is Little Cheeks calling Big Cheeks. Come in, Big Cheeks. Over. Affirmative, Little Cheeks. This is Big Cheeks receiving you from the future. How are things going in the past? <laughs> They're going great, Sandy. Your plan worked perfectly. The formula burned up before Mr. Plankton could nab it. Now it can be safely rediscovered in the future. Ha! <sighs> Mission accomplished, timeline preserved. Now everything can continue just the way it's always been. While Sandy may think she's talking to her past self, she's actually talking to an alternate version from a different timeline. Infinite timelines, infinite universes! That's the only way they could possibly have a conversation with each other without, you know, the unraveling of space and time as we know it. And on top of that, their worlds don't even look the same. How could Sandy grow up in 3D, but then go back to 2D as an adult? <laughs> I don't know about you, but dimensions don't usually change like that. Hi, Squidward. Okay, maybe it happens sometimes. But one question still remains. How did SpongeBob come up with the Krabby Patty formula in the first place? Well, because in that universe, he was supposed to. SpongeBob, you idiot, you're a genius! I am. The whole reason Sandy crossed universes was to clean up the timeline, but instead she disrupted the course of an entire other universe. Guess we'll just have to wait to see how that plays out. Now, you could write these examples off as just part of the world of Bikini Bottom, but that doesn't answer the question of why they're part of Bikini Bottom. And I bet you're also asking, who damaged the space-time continuum so massively, so entirely, that it caused multiple timelines to get crossed, tied up, and merged into one single show? Well, that, my friends, I have an answer to. And it all falls on Squidward. That's right. When he broke the time machine way back in episode 14, it let Plankton travel to a parallel universe, Sandy to permanently alter another, and ultimately allowed the Patrick Star Show to exist. Without that, none of this would even be possible. Patrick Star Show is a perfect example of what happens when timelines and universes get mixed together. And as time moves forward, I can only imagine how much stranger this universe will become. But I guess I'm grateful to Squidward, because in a way, he gave us some really fun new SpongeBob shows. And if you ever notice something strange within a show that might not make total sense, just know you can thank Squidward for it. <coughs> I'll collect my money now. Thank you guys, thank you all so much for watching, and if I see anything else strange in Bikini Bottom, you'll be the first to know. Just make sure you tune in.